Hi, everyone. Well, welcome to Joy in Christ. We're so glad you're joining us, and it's so great to have you um, on fight Facebook. If you're joining us live, we're so excited. We just know that uh, God has something amazing for you if you're viewing with us tonight. So we're excited. My name is Vicki, uh, Pastor Vicki Lund, and this is my husband, Pastor Earl Lund. Tonight we're going to be talking about Jesus calming the storm, and that's going to be from Mark 4. Um, just a quick recap on what we talked about last week. Um, I really felt led um, in Exodus as we, were, as we read about Moses and how God just came to him over and over again before each plague that he actually told Moses over and over. If you want to refer to that, um, you could look at one of several times would be in Mark, or excuse me, Exodus 7, and that's uh, verse 1. And then the Lord said to Moses, see, I have made you, um, anyway, so my point is that God told Moses over and over and over let my, to tell Pharaoh, let my people go so they may worship me. And over and over again, so what Earl and I really felt led last week as we were sharing that, um, you know, God just wanted people to leave Egypt. You know, there are people that are in bondage, in some kind of pain, and God just wants you to be free so you can worship him. And worship is so incredibly important. What a blessing, what a gift it is for us to enter into his presence, fix our eyes on Jesus, and how much we're changed in that. So again, leaving Egypt and worshiping God. Um, so tonight I just really felt led if I can go ahead and start with Mark 4. If you want to turn your Bibles. Would you like to open in prayer? Sure, if you want to go ahead. Okay. Earl's going to open up in prayer. So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you. And Jesus, we thank you and praise you. And Holy thank Spirit, you, we thank you and praise you. And we just welcome you here tonight. We just welcome God. you here into the studio. We just welcome you here God. into everyone's yes, homes God. that are watching. Yes, we just welcome you so that they will just feel your presence. Yes, they will just understand you, your words in a greater way. And that yes, they will God. just experience truth, yes, God. your truth, to help set the captives free, Amen. to set the captives free, Amen. and to set them free in a way God. that you'll expose the truth of the lie, any lies that they're believing Amen. that the enemy has convinced them of, so that the Word, Jesus the Word, the Bible the Word, Amen. and the Holy Spirit who authored the word through 40 men will come and reveal his truth to you so that you can see things in a different way and that the darkness will lift and the light will come thank you god in jesus name amen thank you amen amen and amen wow we just appreciate that just god meeting us here tonight so if you would open your Bibles up to Mark 5. Verse 35. Verse 35. And actually, that's going to be Mark 4, verse oh, 35. Yeah, Mark. And so this is the story about where Jesus calms the storm. And there were several things that God was really highlighting uh, this today for me. And um, several months ago, as I was reading this passage, and I really pray that it would just minister to you today, because I really feel like there's people around that are watching that may be in a storm today, that things are coming at them or around them, and they're not certain how to handle the situation, not sure exactly what God's speaking to them about. And I really pray that this will just minister. So it starts on verse 35. Again, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, and I found that interesting when it says evening came, because I think there's so many people that in the evening and at night that they're just getting really um, just hard hit with just thoughts and um, just anxieties. Um, some people are experiencing even night terrors that they just can't sleep because of the thoughts just racing through their mind. And um, this passage again is evening. So the day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. So Jesus was prophesying that they were going to the other side. So they had that promise before they entered that 
boat got on the water that they would go to the other side. Just as we have all been given so many amazing promises in the word of God that God has given us as promises, as prophecies for our lives, for our family, and for our, for our souls, and we need to hold on to those. So he said, um, leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. As I was reading that, there were also other boats with him. I was thinking about, so here Jesus is in the boat with the disciples, and there are other boats around. And how many times have we actually seen, you know, other believers that were going through a difficult time or a challenging time, and we're watching because we know they're with Jesus in that storm, and it's so beautiful to see how his grace is on them, how his love is on them, how he's equipping them, how he's supporting them as, as their refuge. So I was so, um, that was just so highlighted to me. There were also other boats with him. A furious swell came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. So many years ago, I think what used to happen when I would be in a storm, many times I would feel the waves crashing over me, almost like a tsunami. There were times where I felt in my life almost like a tsunami was coming over me, but I I felt when I first was reading this the other day, I was reminded how much God has changed my life because there were times where I would be in a storm and I would actually grab a, a five-gallon bucket, an empty bucket, and, and perform and strive to get myself out of that storm. And I would push and I would do, I would do everything I can in my will to make it happen for the storm, t for me to not drown in that water that was surrounding me. And I so, I'm sure you could probably relate to that too yeah. <laughs> as time goes by. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. And so one thing I really love about the word is when I'm reading to be able to put myself in that passage, put myself in that passage and ask God, you know, where am I in this scripture? You know, am I the, am I the position of the Pharisee? Am I the, in the position of um, whoever that might be in that, in that scene? in that passage. And in this particular one, I'm really amazed by it because when I saw this, I was just so reminded of Jesus sleeping on the cushion in the stern. And so when I, when I read this, I just was so reminded, I'm just like, Jesus, so I'm, I'm in a storm in different times of my life, and I just want to enter in, and I want to, I find myself at his feet. He's, he's on the boat, he's in the storm, the waves are crashing, and he's resting and I really feel as if he's resting in that stormy, stormy water because he knows the Father's heart. He knows he's loved. He has this amazing deep, deep um, knowledge of, of God and who he is as his Father. And so he's in the water. And so that gave me such reassurance. So now when I'm learning, and I pray this ministers to someone that's watching tonight, that you too could just rest in his presence that you can come to Jesus and rest regardless whatever is going on around you. And so the um, passage continues. So the disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drowned? Just as I was saying earlier about me feeling like I'm going to drown and I have to survive and I have to, I have to fight myself because I feel like I'm alone. But really, it's a lie. I'm, I was never alone. He was always with me. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died, and it was completely calm. And then he goes on, but I, I just think this passage is just so awesome, and I definitely want um, to get your feelings on this as well, too. But after that verse, he goes from, from rest to power, because in Mark 5 is when um, the passage reads about the, the, um, that Jesus healed the demon-possessed man. So he comes from a, a place of rest to power and authority. And I just think it's such a beautiful, powerful verse. So if you can share your thoughts on that, Pastor Earl, I would so yeah. appreciate that. Well, and, and I want to go back a little bit earlier into the passage. So Jesus is sleeping in the stern of the boat. And it doesn't say why he's sleeping. But you know what? We can, you need to read into the word of God sometimes and go, why 
Is he sleeping? Well, it went, as, as Pastor Vicky said, let us go over to the other side. Mm -hmm. So what did Jesus do? He typically, almost every day, was getting away and spending time with his Father. Amen. So he was praying and talking to his Father in heaven. He was finding out what is it that he wanted him to do? What is it that he had in store for him? What is it that's coming up? What is it that's going on? Well, Jesus could rest because he already knew that his father had something for him on the other side. If his father had something for him on the other side, it doesn't matter what was going on in, that, in the Sea of Galilee where this took place. It doesn't matter because he knew he was going to get to the other side no matter how big the waves were because his father wouldn't have been talking to him about what he was going to do in the future if there was no future. If he was going to die in the waves in the Sea of Galilee, there was no future. So if his father truly is outside of time, if his father is in That's eternity, so if his father truly understands the future and understands everything, then if he's going to tell Jesus, oh, this is what's going to happen on this side, and it doesn't come true. If God's word, if the Father's words, if the Son's words, if the Holy Spirit's words don't come through one time, then they're liars. They're not. Their words are always true. Everything always. throughout the word, throughout history, when they've written things through men, through prophecy, it always comes true. And people have done everything they can to disprove the Bible, and no one has ever been able to do it. And so Jesus could rest because he's our perfect example of how to live our lives. One, prayer is truly having a relationship with the Father. That's right. He can talk to him. We're not to talk at God, at the Father, we're to have a relationship with the Father, to hear what his heart is, and he can listen to our heart. But you know what? Then you go down to the disciples. They're in the boat, and they're fishermen, so they know the Sea of Galilee. They know when, those, when the waves come up and the winds come up, it's dangerous. People die. So what did they do? They immediately went to thinking about everything here on earth. They now thought about what they know, not what the Father or what Jesus know. And so even if you go to Matthew 6 in the model prayer, it starts with talking about the Father and your relationship with the Father. And so the disciples, when all of a sudden the storm comes up, they forget about everything that Jesus has been teaching them. All they can go is, we're going to die. We're going to die. That's right. Mm -hmm. I've done it. Okay? I've done it. I've had the storms come up, and I'm like, I'm going to die. I am going to die this time. And, and God's going, trust me. Step back. Get your eyes on me. Get your focus on me. Amen. Get it off of the waves, off of the storm, off of the circumstances, because that's how the enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life, as it says in John 10.10. 10. And Jesus goes, but I want to give you life and give it more to you more abundantly so you can live more abundantly. Well, this is a great example of living more abundantly. When they're fearful... What does it say in 1 John 4? Perfect love casts out fear. Fear is not from God. They're in total fear. That means the enemy has now, they've allowed the enemy to come in as they focus on their circumstances instead of focusing on what Jesus said. Let us go over to the other side. So Jesus at this time, when he's on earth, he's the son of man. He's not the son of God because he gave up his godly rights so that he could live as a man so that he 
was would be worthy to become the Lamb of God, to become that perfect sacrifice, because he had to go through every temptation we go through, all the trials that That's we right. go through, That's all right. the things that we go through, but then not fail. And so here is the perfect example. And so he's resting because he knows he's getting to the other side and there's nothing to worry about. The disciples forgot about what Jesus said, so now they're worried, fearful. Everything that the enemy wants to do to your life to get you off track, to get you off the mark, to get your focus off of what God has in store for you, what the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have in store for you, Amen. to be able to then so good. finally go, Jesus says, quiet the storm. You know what? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they can quiet the storm in your life at any time. They can quiet it. But you also have to know, the trials are there to test you so you understand where your faith is, so you understand what you believe in, to bring you to a higher level, to make you more right. a, into the image of Jesus and into the mindset of Jesus because that is ultimately what the goal is, to tr conform us into the image of Christ, transform our mind into the thoughts of Christ. Read Romans 12, 2. You know, look at uh, Romans 8, 30 or 31. Read them. You need to understand the word so you understand what is it that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit want for you so that you can become more like Christ so you glorify the Father. And I think you just so um, explained that so beautifully, and I, I so agree with you as far as the promises of God. Understanding the promises of God are just vital. So as Jesus had told them, you know, let's go, we're going to go to the other side. You know, there's so many verses and so many scriptures that are so part of who we are as truth that we, that we understand. So when we're going through those situations or we're experiencing, you know, um, opportunities to grow and learn, you know, that we can just rest in his presence. You know, when you're talking about, you know, the trials of this life, you know, the, the times where I've gone through some really challenging times, I'm so thankful for those moments. I'm so thankful for being in those in those storms because each and every time God just revealed himself to who to to me in that moment. And I that's what I really think as far as a breakthrough is concerned. So many people are praying for their breakthrough, praying for the check to come or the new job to come or whatever it may be or the son to come home that you haven't seen, whatever that may be. The breakthrough is really when necessarily the conditions haven't changed, but that that God just reveals who he is to you in that moment. And I say that from experience, as both you and I both understand. So the conditions don't have, have to change. I still have peace. I still have joy in the midst of it, knowing that everything's going to be okay and that I'm going to continue to surrender and I'm going to continue to trust regardless what I see. Well, I was going to say, it, it just... Pastor Vicki just nailed that one, and I want to add something to this that's right out of this passage here because the greatest breakthrough is when you can have faith in the storm. That's right. When you can trust the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the storm. And look what Jesus says. After he says, quiet, be still, and now all of a sudden the waves go down that's and it's right. calm. And they're like, how did he do that? How did he do it? What does he say? Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? It's when you can trust the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, and all your understanding, and not lean on your own understanding, not lean on how you want to do it, but you can trust God in His ways. That's when the real breakthrough is going to Amen. come in your life. That's when the enemy is going to lose strength in your life. That's when doors are going to close. Things are going to happen. When you don't look at the natural, you don't look at what happens in the physical, 
but you focus on the spiritual. You focus on God's ways, the higher right. ways. You That's focus right. and bring heaven to earth when you trust him. You walk in faith. That's right. And all of a sudden, he says here, this is amazing to me. They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So wait a second. They're in the storm. They're, they could be seeing 20, 30, 40 foot waves, right? Now, I understand that's scary. In the natural, you look at that, you see the waves. Ah, that's scary. But look what here. He just calmed down the waves. It's now quiet. And now they're terrified? Now they're that, that well, wait a second. That means they don't realize who he is. They don't realize what's going on. They're terrified because how can this guy do this? Who is he? Well, they've totally lost track of who Jesus really is and who they're following. And, and it says, even the wind and the waves obey him? So until we can really understand who the Father is and, and his characteristics, his attributes, his heart and who he is, and understand Jesus, his attributes and who he really is, and the Holy Spirit, we're going to be focused on the natural. And I don't want to be walking around terrified when it's calm, okay? It's one thing to have the storms going on. It's another thing to be calm, and now I'm terrified, and I don't even, I don't believe who Jesus is. And I've been following him, and I gave up everything. That's off. Mm -hmm. You know, as we're talking about uh, prayer and how Jesus was, you know, connected to the Father, I think... There's been times where I've faced something really challenging. Let's say um, maybe it was just something with someone close where, you know, I just don't know how to handle it. I don't know how to process through that situation. And it's the most wonderful thing to be able to enter into God's presence because the veil has been torn from the top to the bottom when Jesus died that we can enter into the presence of God and I can just sit and just wait I could just sit and wait on him and wait on his presence where I don't feel like I have to be speaking or he has to be speaking necessarily, but for me just to feel his presence. And many times I think what I've learned to do as years have gone by is when an opportunity or um, a situation comes up where I really need God's direction and wisdom instead of me starting to pray from that situation, as soon as it hits me is that I've learned to just wait on God to come into his presence and just sit, whether it's putting worship music on or just sitting alone with God, and to let his peace fill me and his love fill me. And I really believe that someone watching tonight needs to hear this, that you would just, just sit with God, you know, turn off the phone, put it down, you know, turn off the TV, that you can just sit with God and just say, Holy Spirit, just come. Holy Spirit, just come and fill me. Just touch me. Just give me a fresh filling of your spirit tonight. Wherever you're at, whatever's going on, that he'll meet you. Just like, just like Jesus was in the storm, that he was so still that he was sleeping on that cushion in the middle of it because he was so connected to the Father. Yeah. And I just, I just felt like I just wanted to say this. When, if you're looking, you know, at us in the camera going, oh, they have it together. Oh, they got this down. Oh, this is no problem to them. But what about me? Hey, it's been tough the last few weeks, okay? I get tired. I get discouraged. I get overwhelmed where there's too much stuff coming at us with work and we're remodeling the house and kids yep. and this thing and relationships and this stuff and that stuff. And it's like I'm going, oh, come on. I'm tired. Give me, I need a break. Give me a, I'm tired here. That's real. But now here's the truth. I have to still trust him. That's right. And even Good. though I'm tired, even though I'm discouraged, I have a choice. 
I can just totally give in to my circumstances. I can totally give in to what's going around me. Or I can keep trusting, walking in faith, keep moving forward. But one of the things I've learned is the old me was I kept trying to perform to be good enough to be accepted by God. And so I would get here, but then it's like, okay, I got to work really hard. If I work hard enough, then I'm going to earn his love, and then he's going to fix everything, and everything's going to be good. And sometimes he's just going, I just want to hold you, Earl. I just want to hold you. I just want to talk to you. So good. I just, I know you're just going, just talk to me. Don't talk at me. Talk with me. And then stop. Listen. And just work through it. And just keep moving forward. But get your eyes off of your circumstances, off of your discouragement, off of Amen. being overwhelmed, off of what's going on. Yes, those are real. But if you just keep trusting me, you just keep walking in faith, you keep moving forward, I'm going to show up and I'm going to help you. And it doesn't mean they're all going to go away, but it means he's going to help give me the strength. He's going to help encourage me. And I'm going to get through because I can go through all kinds Amen. of trials over a lot of years. He always met me there. So let me just quickly pray Amen. in closing. So. Heavenly Father, just meet everybody right Jesus. where they're at. Yes, just God. meet them right where they're at. Yes, meet God. them in their Thank circumstance, you, in their discouragement, Thank in you, whatever's God. going on in their relationships with their Thank finances, Jesus. whatever it is. Just meet them wherever that is. Thank you, Father. Encounter them so that they can help them to walk in faith, Thank help God. them to get your eyes on you, and help yes, them God. to see things from your perspective instead of theirs, to see it yes, your God. way instead of their way, to see it from heaven's ways instead of ours. Just Thank pray you, all God. this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.